In 1854, Charles Lincoln Wilson traveled east to find an engineer to help him build a railroad from Sacramento to Folsom, then north to Lincoln and Marysville. He hired Theodore Judah, an experienced civil engineer who had worked in the Northeast. The Sacramento Valley Railroad would be the first railroad built west of the Mississippi River. Construction began in Sacramento February of 1855. The first trial run was in August of 1855, and it opened for business in February 22nd of 1856, hauling ore, food, goods, and passengers the 22.9 mile between Folsom and the docks of Sacramento. Wouldn't it be nice to have projects that could be finished as quickly now? Because of conflicts between Wilson and his backers, he incorporated a new company called the California Central Railroad in 1857 to continue building from Folsom to Lincoln. A bridge over the American River was built by 1859. The railroad reached Lincoln in 1861. When fully operational, the California Central Railroad had 18.5 miles of track, four locomotives, four passenger cars, and 16 freight cars. A round trip ticket from Sacramento to Lincoln via Folsom was $3 and freight was $4 a ton. Because of the Civil War, money was tight for several years. Not until 1864, when the war was winding down, did construction resume. The rails reached Sheridan in 1866. Eugene Rogers, the founder of Sheridan, had built his own train depot. He was worried that the town would be bypassed for Wheatland if he hadn't built his own. The depot served Sheridan well. A ticket to Lincoln was 75 cents, flour from Click Mill, and milk from Mr. Midley's dairy. Grain, fruit, and nuts were loaded and shipped to market. Copper ore from Dairy Hill Mine was shipped to the smelters in San Francisco. Theodore Judah owned Auburn Ravine Station, the property that would become Lincoln. He sold the parcel to Charles Lincoln Wilson on October of 1859. For those that know Lincoln, this was a rectangular parcel from 1st Street to 9th Street, bordered on the east at East Avenue and to O Street on the west. Throughout the 1850s, Judah was known as Crazy Judah for his belief a railroad could be built over the Sierras. Many at the time considered it impossible. Judah performed much of the land survey work to determine the best route over the Sierra Nevada mountains. Sadly, Judah would never see his dream complete. He died of yellow fever on October 2nd, 1863. He contracted the disease while crossing Panama on a voyage to New York. He was trying to secure financing to buy out the big four investors. When the Transcontinental Railroad reached Roseville in 1864, the line between Folsom and Roseville was unnecessary and then later removed. Today, light rail uses the right-of-way of the Sacramento Valley Railroad to Folsom. It is very difficult to find a trace of the path from Folsom to Roseville. Sheridan had another railroad that is lesser known. In 1902, gold and silver were discovered at McCourtney Road and Karshner Roads. Soon, a deposit of copper was also discovered. The dairy farm mine was formed. Wagon trains hauled ore the five and a half miles to the rail station in Sheridan where it could be shipped to the smelters in San Francisco. In 1914, a narrow gauge railroad was built from Sheridan to the mine. 
It ran along Campbar West Road, then east over a low area to McCourtney Road, and then to the mine at Kishner. A large locomotive, Shea No. 1, pulled eight cars to and fro between the mine and Sheridan. A town formed around the mine named Van Trent. It boasted a post office, store, social hall, theater, and bachelor club. Daily buses ran between Sheridan, Lincoln, and Van Trip. The copper was high in demand during World War I. Suddenly, in 1917, near the end of the war, the mine closed down and the railroad tracks were ripped up. The mine closing had a devastating effect on the Sheridan economy. As the 20th century advanced, access to the railroad became less and less important. Trucks took over the freight and farmers' needs. Cars and the Greyhound bus met transportation needs. Now, even the Greyhound bus is a memory. During the early 70s, 65 was widened and the railroad crossing was improved. The brick warehouse was torn down and side tracks removed. Now, Highway 65 bypass speeds cars past Sheridan turnoff. Trains still speed by blowing their horns with little notice of Sheridan.